I just want to talk about something a bit more serious for now. Anthony Bourdain, Chester Bennington, Kate Spade, Alexander McQueen. These people have so much resources, but they choose to leave this world by their own hands. And it confuses a lot of us. Why would people with so much want to leave this world more than we do? I mean, we have less than them. Death by suicide is probably the opposite end of what thriving is. And having, having been a person who has been clinically depressed myself, I can understand where they come from. But it is a world which is really hard to understand unless you have been depressed yourself. I was a medical student. I had a prestigious career path. I had parents that were supportive of my music and career dreams. I had a lot of loving relationships and friendships all around me, yet I wanted to end my life. Why did I want to? This actually made me drive, uh, drive, drove me to be able to try to figure this out for the last six years. And I think I kind of figured it out. The word is scarcity mindset. So these two words mean nothing to you or me if I do not describe in detail what's really going on behind it. But what scarcity mindset is, is that mindset where you feel like your life is at risk every single day. It's as if you are under threat of survival whenever things don't go your way. It's almost as if we are spoiled brats, really. And that is because we actually go into fight or flight whenever things happen to us. If you understand the origins of fight or flight, we evolved it as a way of responding to life-threatening situations such as seeing a predator. But how many of us actually feel that every day? No, not really, right? Nobody ever sees a predator around, unless you see your cat as your predator, um, <laughs> which they can be. Uh, <laughs> but instead, we go into fight or flight over getting a job, talking to a boss, talking about political affiliations, losing our phones, which I did about three weeks back, <laughs> and over social media posts where people argue. When we go into fight, we are competitive, we are adversarial towards others. We focus on the one thing we think is important and hoard it as much as we can. This is the reason why people keep chasing down things like accolades, money, social status, and grades but yet never seem to be satisfied. And when we go into flight, we go into cocoons of addiction, such as gaming, social media, Korean and Taiwanese soap operas, dysfunctional relationships, sometimes even into depression, or worse, death. But the problem is, as people living here today, we have a more luxurious life than an 18th century king. Why do we still have such scarcity mindset? If everything in the academy was, it, it was true, we should be enlightened, calm, rational people rather than the judgmental, depressive society that is so riddled with scarcity mindset. So what's the reason behind this? The reason is very simple and it's very cliche and probably shared a million times. It is that we mix up our needs with our wants. Okay, now, You've probably heard this a million times, everybody talks about this, but nobody really goes into the details of what this really talks about. And I'm unhappy with this answer too, because what is a need, what is a want? So to make it a bit clearer, I broke it down into what we want as what we term as a satisfier. A satisfier is a tangible, measurable thing that be we believe will satisfy us, which the name suggests. And by logic, satisfier should satisfy us but our mind works a little bit more complex than that. And to explore this, we need to go to the original concept where all of this started, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. How many of you have seen, heard, or studied Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Well, that's a lot of people. So next question, how many of you have read the original article written by him or his book? 
One, oh, wow, that's great. So if you actually read the book, you'd realize that the writing is rather different from what we see today. But to go back further into this, a lot of these articles became the benchmark for a lot of economic, psychological, and governmental models afterwards. And the thing is that Maslow's hierarchy of needs actually started with an article that he wrote called Theory on Mo Human Motivation. So the aim of the article was to talk about what made people actualize. And what year did it get published? 1943. What else happened in 1943? Everybody kind of knows? Okay, World War II. So this is the year where the war started, where a bunch of people, a specific group of people, were stripped of their needs and taken into death camps, right? So that's what happened. And a lot of people actually jumped the bandwagon. So if you read the original article, you know that what happens is that people expanded a lot upon it afterwards. So what we see today of Maslow's hierarchy of needs on Wikipedia is very different from what actually Maslow was writing about. And that's actually where it comes to the biggest difference. In the Wikipedia, all you see are satisfiers and not needs. What I mean by this is, for example, physiological needs. Right now, if you read the Wikipedia, you will see that physiological needs are food, water, shelter, sex, all these kind of different things. However, these are satisfiers. They're not needs. Instead, the need is nutrition or different things. For example, if we're talking about nutrition, we can be satisfied with a burger, a bowl of mixed rice, which is from different cultures, or it can be satisfied by IV drip, which basically pumps all the nutrients into your bloodstream. These are all satisfiers. Well, food is a really good satisfier, but you don't need it. If not, the people on Juice Detox will probably drop dead within a day. So this is where the problem really lies. People will often go into fight or flight when they think that satisfiers are at risk because they mix it up with a need. Every time somebody takes a satisfier from us, it feels like this person is robbing us of our own survival. And to explain a bit more into this, I want to share with you a story about a man I helped. And he's named John. So John is a multi-billionaire. He inherited all his money from his family, and he had what on Instagram and Facebook looked like the most carefree life in the world. But he came to me because he had insomnia, anxiety, and paranoia. He didn't trust anybody around him, and he thought that everyone was out to get to, to use him for his money. What was worse was that he felt like life was meaningless. He was bored living the dream that everyone else had, and he couldn't figure out why. Instead, his mind was always focusing on making more money, getting out of boredom, and traveling the world. This is what we term as high-functioning depression. What this means is that he has all the symptoms of depression, but he was able to function because he, was, he kept going because of the responsibilities and the things that he had to do for his family. And what he was driven by to keep doing that was to prove his value to his family. But every, uh, every so often, he would end up running away to holidays and he would come back to Singapore feeling emptier than before. So what was his fight? His fight was getting more money for the family, achieve social, societal achievements like getting a degree or an MBA to solidify his value in his family. His flight, he literally had six months of travels a year. I think that's what everybody wish, wishes to have, or if not the whole year. But he runs away from the stresses, but he ends up buying happiness. He tries to buy happiness to satisfy himself. However, when I sat down with him and actually asked him what exactly satisfied him the most, it actually revolved around relationships in his life. And most importantly, it was relationships where people appreciated John for himself. That was the really important part. So what was he really looking for? He was looking for intimacy. He's the most alive when he doesn't have to spend a single cent to spend time with somebody he really enjoys and more importantly, he was not receiving any of this from his family. Instead, he had to fight to gain any form of respect or any form of intimacy with his family. And therefore, he didn't know that he wanted or needed intimacy. 
So he either tried to fight or he flew away on a regular level. That's why we term as mixing satisfiers with needs. He mistook success to gain intimacy. He mistook traveling to gain satisfaction. He tried clubbing, he tried music, he tried drugs with the amount of money he had, he had tried everything. And, but they no longer satisfy him, uh, they satisfy him no longer than a single day. And if you look at it objectively, you replace whatever he was doing with things like a job, sex, the latest iPhone, a relationship, achievements and successes, grades, gold medals, or social media validations. What happens is that you will start realizing that when you trade up what he was lacking with any of these things, people will go into scarcity mindset. And no satisfiers will satisfy you unless you generate your own satisfier. So generating satisfier is the only way you can satisfy yourself. So it's not about the external thing that satisfies you, it's that you have to generate yourself. And let me explain a bit more into this. So because I met a lot of people like John, I was trying to figure out what made people feel the most satisfied. So I mixed in Maslow's hierarchy, a lot of studies in developmental psychology, my interest in positive psych and sociology to kind of come up with a new model based off all these models. And being the geek that I am, I called it the most literal name I could come up with, biopsychosocial needs. Literally, biological, psychological, and sociological needs. So what happens, which is different about this model, is that we, I'm only talking about the needs. We're focusing on the needs, how we need it, and how we, it's, the satisfiers can fulfill it. So there's no focus on the satisfiers themselves. So here's the model. So it's a lot like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but basically I split it up into biological, psychological, and sociological. And I'm only gonna focus on the first two levels to talk about scarcity mindset today. So let's talk about biological needs. So biological needs is basically what your body is designed for and needs to be able to survive. So there are three main categories. There's nutrition, which is basically satisfied by things like food, water, sunlight, and multiple things like this. There's health, which is actually satisfied by hygiene, meaning being able to avoid and being protected from elements of nature as well as diseases. And for intimacy, the feeling of being engaged and empathized with. In fact, there are studies saying that babies without physical human touch will die even if they're fed well. People who actually do not receive empathy and hugs and love from people will go into depression. So that is an, a biological need. And from there, we need to talk about the generation of satisfiers for these needs, which is actually the next level. The first level of psychological needs is called ownership needs. Ownership means that you own and have proven that this skill can generate your biological needs. So you won't be satisfied deep down until your mind recognizes that these are what you need and the value of what you just generated. And to break this down a bit more, the parts of ownership needs are three simple parts. The survival skill itself, the valuation of the skill, and experience of success. So I'm not gonna just leave it there. I'm gonna give a little bit of example. So I play the bass. So to me, that's a survival skill set. Why? Because the second part, how society values it and how I value it. I get to play music to earn money from the gigs and I gain intimacy that I have from my interactions with the audience and the musicians I'm around. The next part is the experience of success, which is really important. I survive on just playing music and creating friendship circles out of the music circle for one whole year. That gave me this confidence and the understanding that I owned playing the bass as a survival skill set. It's been proven of its success and I own it. So this means that I can generate my main biological needs from this skill set. So scarcity mindset is basically when people have not been able to satisfy their ownership needs, which means you own skill sets that generate your biological needs. So for a lot of people, when they are worried about their livelihood at stake, the reason that they feel so is because they feel that the satisfiers are what they need. For example, a really terrible boss that threatens your job. 
an iPhone, okay? If you lose it, it didn't exist 30 years ago, you should be able to survive without it. Or somebody attractive talking to our partners. This is where a lot of people get really worried. But these are the things that people think that will steal the satisfiers away from them because they're not confident of generating their own satisfiers. And this is the reason why even though we have all these external things, we feel empty. And the only way to get out of this scarcity mindset and to be empowered to thrive is to be able to generate our own satisfiers. This is when we are fully capable of taking on the world as it is. But nowadays, a lot of people like to go for, uh, are, are looking for their purpose through travel or looking for what they want through things like conferences, seminars, uh, uh, or going into entrepreneurship or spiritual retreats, like people going to India for their yoga meditation retreats. But these are meaningless unless you can generate your own satisfiers. Because if they were successful, we'd have plenty of enlightened, fulfilled, actualized people all around us. But we, would, we don't have that. Because these people go for their sessions and they don't learn to generate their own satisfiers. And when we depend on other people's definitions of what needs and satisfiers us, we fail to discover how to generate the satisfiers we need to fulfill ourselves and to be at peace with ourselves. So, generating our satisfiers is the only way that we can thrive. I hope that this talk has inspired you to find out what your needs are and how you are going to generate your own satisfiers. And for that, it's the best way for all of us to grow out of scarcity mindset. Thank you.